students, welcome back. Today we will continue with the electrocardiogram, or the EKG. This is a visual representation of the electrical activity of the heart. In order to explain the events that take place, we will need to draw several cross-sections of the heart showing the myocardium. For the sake of clarity, we will number and color code these six hearts. We will also need a blank graph on which to place the EKG tracing. We will first show the electrical events that take place in the heart. Then we will represent these electrical events on the electrocardiogram. We will represent depolarization as a red color and repolarization as a green color. In step one, atrial depolarization begins. In step two, atrial depolarization is complete. In step three, atrial repolarization takes place and ventricular depolarization begins. Shown here is atrial repolarization and moving down the interventricular septum towards the apex and moving up the outside of the heart is ventricular depolarization. In step four, we have full ventricular depolarization. In step five, ventricular repolarization moves upward from the apex. In step six, both ventricles are fully repolarized and the cycle is complete. Let's annotate these events. In step one, atrial depolarization begins. In step two, atrial depolarization completes. There are two events that take place in step three. The first is atrial repolarization and the second is the beginning of ventricular depolarization. In step four, ventricular depolarization is complete. In step five, ventricular repolarization begins at the apex. In step six, ventricular repolarization, and as shown here, the cardiac cycle is complete. Now, we will take the eventual events that are on the heart and represent them on the graph. Rather than showing event number one first, we'll show the completion of the cycle first, and that is represented with number six. Shown here is the electrical activity for the completion of ventricular repolarization. Now let's represent number one. Here we have a wave of atrial depolarization in the direction of the apex. In step number two, we have completion of atrial depolarization. Let's label the three events we have so far. Step three is the most complicated portion of the electrical activity. We have atrial repolarization and we also have ventricular depolarization ascending from the apex. Let's represent this on the graph. In step three, we have a large and rapid increase in electrical activity. In step four, we have the completion of ventricular depolarization. In step 5, ventricular repolarization is initiated at the apex. And in step 6, ventricular repolarization is complete and the cycle is finished. And so shown on the graph is one complete cycle of the heart's electrical activity. This is an electrocardiogram. The first electrocardiograph, the instrument, was invented by the Germans. And so the word is spelled with a K instead of a C. And this one is abbreviated EKG. And the first one, of course, is abbreviated ECG. On our EKG, we have five direction changes. The direction changes are shown here, 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 and here. Indicated here are five direction changes. These direction changes are known as deflections. Two of these deflections are broad, shown here and here, and the three deflections associated with step number three in purple are all sharp. The broad deflections are called waves. Each of these deflections is given a label. These labels are somewhat arbitrary. Cardiologists could have named these deflections as 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Or they could have named them A, B, C, D, and E. They decided to use letters. The first graph of electrical activity only showed four deflections, and this older method used A, B, C, and D. For this reason, anatomists decided to use the second half of the alphabet, starting a letter N, to name these deflections. However, the letters N and O had already been used by Rene Descartes on his Cartesian plane system, so anatomists decided to start with the letter P. So these deflections are now labeled P, Q, R, S, and T. And as I've indicated before, the two waves are broad. And so we have the P wave here and the T wave here. An entire cardiac cycle takes about 0.8 seconds. This gives a normal heart rate of 75 beats per minute. Let's show under this graph where the atria and the ventricles contract. Remember, contraction will occur only after the electrical events. In step one, we have the beginning of atrial depolarization. Atrial contraction begins in the middle of step one. And atrial contraction is complete during step two. Let's next look at ventricular contraction. There's a mistake here. This should be ventricular depolarization. Ventricular depolarization ascends from the apex. Let's make this correction. Ventricular depolarization begins in step three and it ascends from the apex. Ventricular depolarization begins here and ventricular contraction will occur about a tenth of a second later here. Ventricular depolarization is complete in step four and ventricular contraction is complete at the end of step four. 
And so atrial contraction is complete at the end of step two, and ventricular contraction is complete at the end of step four. Let's represent these contractions on the hearts themselves. And so represented here is atrial contraction, which takes place at the end of step two, after the completion of atrial depolarization. Ventricular contraction is complete at the end of step four, and so let's represent that on the heart for step four. And so represented here is ventricular contraction, which takes place at the end of step four, after the completion of ventricular depolarization. Please keep in mind that the electrocardiogram, the EKG, says nothing about contraction. It only shows the electrical events that take place in the heart. Let's review the information in this lecture. In step one here, we have atrial depolarization. That is shown here as the P wave. In step two, we have atrial depolarization complete. That is shown here. In step three, we have two events that take place. Atrial repolarization and ventricular depolarization, which begins at the apex and ascends the heart on the outside. That complex electrical signature is shown here as a QRS complex. In step four, we have ventricular depolarization complete. That's shown here. In step five, we have ventricular repolarization beginning at the apex and ascending upward. That's shown here as the T wave. And in step six, ventricular repolarization is complete. And this completes the heart cycle. An entire heart cycle takes approximately 0.8 seconds, which comes to about 75 heartbeats per minute. We've represented atrial contraction at the end of step two, and we've represented ventricular contraction at the end of step four. And so this completes our discussion of the EKG or the electrocardiogram, and it also completes this lecture. I hope you've learned a lot.